Our next guest is Royal Editor for the Daily Mirror, Russell Myers. Russell, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin with what's been dubbed the Royal Wedding of the Year. Crown Prince Hussein of Jordan, he this week married wife Rajwa. I've got to say, it really looks like an incredible wedding. And of course, Prince William and Princess Kate were in attendance. Firstly, Russell, take us through this really lavish event. Well, hi, Danica. I mean, cough, where to start? I mean, it literally was a who's who of foreign royalty. I mean, not only just uh, Prince William and Princess Kate there, we had the royals from Japan, from Denmark, from Sweden. We had Dr. Jill Biden in attendance as well. Some more British royalty as well, because we had Princess Beatrice and her husband as well. And uh, so you look at the sort of ties to the British royal family, to the Jordanian royal family, and it goes back centuries. I mean, this is not only a, a current relationship, it is something, you know, we often talk about the soft power of the royals and sort of them doing government business. And that is something, there's a bit of a hint of that there because the, the Crown Prince of Jordan has a relationship with Prince William. We saw them sort of hanging out, watching the World Cup back in 2018 when William was in the country. And that relationship is certainly something for the future. And uh, I saw some of the commentary about this, you know, hugely lavish. Uh, wedding, And it was not only uh, talking about the event, but it was really talking about the future king of Jordan. And his relationships are going to be really important with, uh, with world leaders and foreign royalty moving forward. So, you know, we've just come off the back of the coronation, haven't we? You and I were, were there reporting on it. And now to sort of this feast of, uh, of glittering tiaras and, uh, and ball gowns and dresses. And uh, the, the, the wedding was absolutely spectacular for sure. Absolutely, and no doubt more spectacular events to come, Russell. The Princess of Wales, though, she was wearing quite a beautiful tiara to this wedding. Why was this particular tiara so special? Well, that's really interesting because at the coronation, it was a lot, there was a lot of speculation about what Kate would be wearing, whether the, the, the royal women would be wearing tiaras. It's often a, you know, quite a big thing for royal watchers. Now, uh, she had sort of a, a newly fashioned sort of leaf tiara, if you will, and it wasn't necessarily crusted in the, the diamonds of old that we would normally see. And I think that was fitting in with the, the king's message of sustainability. But everybody loves to see the bling, and it was on show for sure at the, uh, the Crown Prince of Jordan wedding just a few days ago and Kate chose to wear the lover's knot tiara and the reason why this is special because it goes back uh, quite a considerable amount of time over 100 years made in 1914 part of the royal collection but it was actually gifted to the from the late queen to Princess Diana and she'd worn it back in the 80s I think 1981 she wore it first to the state opening of parliament and we've seen Kate wearing it in uh, in just the last year she wore it to state banquet and uh, Again, we like to see the history laced through our royal family, often talking about how uh, they're going to sort of shapeshift into the future. Charles with his message of sustainability, what does it mean to be a modern monarchy? But certainly we like to see a bit of the bling from now. And, uh, and Kate really wore it well at the, at the weekend. We do like to see the bling and uh, Kate always looks so stylish. No matter what she wears, I think that she always looks absolutely fantastic. Now, Russell, some video has emerged from this event of Prince William seemingly signalling to his wife to, to hurry up, to chop, chop, stop chatting to the newlyweds. We've actually got a bit of that clip. Uh, let's play it now. <laughs> So, Russell, as you can see, he gave the, the wind-up gesture. Come on, I'm ready to move on. Uh, but what I liked the most was that you could see that Kate could sense that her husband was indeed getting restless. They clearly know each other very well. Well, it reminded me of my wife trying to get me out of a party when she wanted to go, actually. It told me to stop talking. But, you know, whenever I spend time with William and Kate, you, tell, you can tell immediately that they are a couple that knows each other very, very well. They're not only a, a partnership for their marriage and their children, but a, a great partnership in their working relationship as well. And I'm sure that um, it would have been reciprocated the other way had, uh, had the shoe been on the other foot. So, you know, definitely something we can all identify with, I think. 
absolutely. They're just like everybody else when it comes down to it. Now, speaking of Princess Kate, a charity called Kinship that she works with said that an engagement with the princess last week has now led to a surge of inquiries. Russell, how big of an impact does Kate have? Well, definitely interesting. I mean, this is certainly not the first time that this has happened. And it's interesting seeing the, the, the Royals Association with their certain charities. And uh, this happens time and time again. And you know, when the question does come up of you know, what sort of work do they do? Do we necessarily need a royal family in the modern age? You know, that, that is an argument that will continue for, forevermore, I think. And it depends what side of your fence you're on. But you know, when they do have these associations with charities, I mean, you look at the, 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 the way that the late Queen had... Uh, an affiliation with over 800 charities, same as the Duke of Edinburgh. It's carrying on now, of course, with the younger members of the family. And it's really important for those charities to have that association because it gets them press coverage. It gets them interest in the causes. If there's a particular need that, uh, that needs identifying, then, of course, the royals can help with that. I think we saw that especially during COVID and it's carried on um, afterwards. And certainly this charity and, and many more will benefit for, from this association. And, uh, and I think that that can only be a good thing for sure. Absolutely. And more broadly, Russell, how much influence does Kate have? It just seems that her popularity is going up and up, particularly after the coronation. Well, definitely. I mean, we, we talk about, the, the again, the future of the monarchy. I mean, it's no point bandying around the subject that the king is 74, the queen is 75. They are, they're necessarily not going to want to do those huge, big tours that the, the late queen had done in the infancy of her reign. We've seen the younger members taking on you know, three week, two, two or three week tours. Uh, is that necessarily what the king and queen need to do? I'm not so sure. Perhaps there is you know, uh, other vehicles that they will need to, to have their attention to. Certainly at home, uh, the business of the monarchy making it more of a slimmed down version. And th there's a lot of pressure on Kate and William's shoulders, isn't there? Because there's no Harry and Meghan anymore. There's certainly this more slimmed down version. Prince Andrew is certainly out of the picture. And so there is a, th there's more pressure on them. And I think that, uh, that they will certainly have to get involved a lot more. And uh, they are popular. They're popular with the younger members. I mean, we talk about the TikTok generation. Their social media presence is really important, I think, to them at the moment. And uh, I think they're doing a pretty good job up to now. And it'd be interesting to see over the next few months and certainly a couple of years to see what they do both at home and abroad. Well, I know even from uh, being in London covering the coronation, the public just love them. They've just got such a, a light for, for both of them. So, yes, you're right. It'll be interesting to see how what they do moving forward. Now, Russell, this is interesting because it's been revealed that Prince William used a fake name while at university to avoid attention and, I guess, fly under the radar. Now, this is something that celebrities, of course, do all the time. But what name did he choose? Well, it's emerged. I mean, I've heard this story a few times and it pops up from now, now and then. It's, it's quite hilarious. He used the name Steve, which is, you know, as uh, as probably as bland as he could have thought about than not being the Prince William that we all know. So he's trying to fade in to the background. And listen, it's an interesting um, position that he's in, isn't it? I mean, talking about when he was a young man going to university, the pressure that was already on his shoulders. I think his mother, of course, had tried to give him as normal as an upbringing as possible. And he's certainly trying to do that for his children. So uh, it's, it's, it's forever the question that they have to, to struggle about how normal can they be? I mean, they're still living in castles and palaces being chauffeur driven in helicopters around the country and around the world. And it's possibly a little bit of normality that he was trying to claw back in his life during the early stages. Well, I guess with a name like Steve, you really just become your average man. So uh, there you go. Interesting name that he chose there. Now, I want to talk about Sophie, of course, the Duchess of Edinburgh. She really has become a prominent royal in, in recent weeks in particular. Uh, after the coronation concert, she was seen rocking away to Lionel Richie's all night long. And I think that there were some memes made about her. The public just love her. And Russell, she's been touted as King Charles's secret weapon. Do you think that she is? Well, definitely. I mean, it's, it's interesting with Sophie because when she was the Countess of Wessex and now Duchess of Edinburgh, yeah, a lot of people talking about the fact that she is popular. 
I mean, I've worked with her before. She's really passionate about the subjects that she discusses. We've seen her recently taking on big, big roles on behalf of the British government. You know, she was in Iraq just a few days ago. She's worked extensively in Africa, talking very, very eloquently and knowledgeably about uh, violence against women across the world. And uh, you know, whether she is the, the royal family's secret weapon, I think a lot of the work that she has done has gone under the radar. And that isn't necessarily a fault of her own. It's because you know, there's, there's a lot of roles to cover sometimes. And when there's been a lot of scandal and infighting, she's the person who just gets on with the job. She doesn't get involved in any of that. And I think that's when we're talking about a slim down monarchy, she's definitely going to be an asset. So moving forward, you know, people love seeing her getting up and dance at the coronation. That showed a different side to her. We certainly don't see that a lot of the royals. So I think that she's, a, she's definitely not necessarily a secret weapon, but she can definitely be a, a force for good for the future for the family. Why do you think she's been so under the radar until now? Well, again, I think it's that you look at the last few years and there's definitely been a lot going on in Royal Land, hasn't there? Where we've had the unfortunate passing of the Queen with her coronation, but wider, the wider scandal of the family in terms of Prince Andrew, that's taken up a lot of press coverage. The, the Harry and Meghan situation has seemed to rumble on for years now. And whenever you know they make a noise across the pond, then it gets picked up. And as I said, she's the person who sort of just gets on with the job. There's no airs and graces about it. She does the job uh, diligently. And uh, I'm sure the charities and organisations she works with are pretty appreciative of that fact as well. Just finally, uh, some pictures have emerged of Prince Andrew. He got stuck behind a dog walker as he was driving into <sighs> Windsor. We've uh, got some pictures of it. Uh, he looks like he's having the time of his life. He thought it was hilarious when this dog walker, Russell, she was just firmly focused on that walk. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, we don't see too much of him these days. I mean, he keeps his uh, head down, as it were, because you know, he's had to step back from the royal family. There is absolutely no way back for him. I think that that's been made pretty clear. And uh, the, the only pictures we do see of him, seemingly, are in Windsor driving his car around. And, uh, you know, there, there are unfortunate frames of him sort of laughing and cackling that get brought up whenever there's a story about Prince Andrew. But in this incident, this, this, poor, this poor lady didn't really know what was going on until the big Range Rover was behind her, but it, it gave us all a laugh, I suppose. Yeah, it certainly did, and probably some better photos of uh, Prince Andrew for once uh, in recent years. Russell Myers, lovely to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us on the show tonight. Thanks very much. My pleasure.